All right, in today's video, we're going to talk about latency or ping, and that is how long of a lag there is between when you at your house are trying to communicate uh, with some outside uh, place like an internet website, a gaming service, streaming service, or whatnot, and how that differs between these different home internet services that these wireless carriers have. So I have all of these services. We have the AT&T one here, Internet Air, that just came out. I'm going to call this one the egg gateway because, uh, well, let's just say it looks like an egg, uh, quite a big one at that. And then we have T-Mobile. This is their latest gateway. And then I have Verizon, and this is one of their gateways here, their cube. So I've been testing all these, and what's really cool is that uh, recently, you might, if you watch my channel a lot, I just replaced my Wi-Fi network for my whole property with a TP-Link Omada setup. And what's really cool is that it actually tracks the ping and lots of other stuff every 15 minutes and I have all three of these services actually plugged into it as a multi-WAN setup so that means that it's checking the ping for all of these all the time and now I have a like history of data so we're going to take a look at that and then I'll show you what the big differences in the ping I've been seeing for these gateways all right now before we get too far I must say this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel so thanks for tuning in if you haven't seen my other videos consider checking them out and subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell icon so you are notified but if you like this specific video hit that thumbs up button just down below and keep watching for more so let's hop right into these uh, features with this Amada uh, Wi-Fi system if you want to see more about that I have videos of how I set that up and how it performs but let's just dive into some of the summary stuff on my tablet here and what you'll see is there's this one called ISP load and in the uh, orange on this screen at least is the latency and you can see that that point I picked it was 32 now it's 43 45 uh, 40 and the blue is actually throughput so that's how much traffic is going through on that ISP and you can look over here and the reason that scale is so far off because there's one ginormous ping up here somewhere close to 800 milliseconds and that was because it was doing traffic and in fact I was doing a speed test at that point in time so this is 24 hours of history here for this ISP you can see I have three buttons up here and so that one is um, Verizon and then I can go over here to this next one and we can see this one is T-Mobile now uh, again you have to look at the um, y-axis or the scale of this to understand if it's higher or lower but you can also see a trend line there just how consistent is it and um, you can see here it's kind of neat um, as I look through this because I am doing a load balancing across all three of these ISPs, so you'll see different ones of them having higher load throughout this 24-hour period. Uh, but you can see here um, on this one, you know, 40s, maybe 50, 60, a little bit higher uh, apparently than uh, Verizon. But now we have this next one here, and this one is all over the place. And if we look at the scale, it's also high. So this one, I'm getting, you know, 160, uh, 109, 170. Oh, sorry, I switched WANs on me there. Um, 200, kind of very inconsistent. And then what's kind of neat about it is that even when it's under high load, it actually doesn't seem to change. In fact, under this high load, and sometimes it was some of the lowest when it was um, at least showing up loaded. So I know this is kind of hard to see. So what I did is I exported this data. There's actually an export button that you can hit. I exported the data onto my computer, and now I'll throw up a fancy graph that has them all together. I also did a little bit more digging into the data as far as what was the average ping across the board, even including that really big spike on that uh, Verizon one. And what we see here is that my average for Verizon was 43 milliseconds. If I took out that spike, it was 41 milliseconds, so really not a huge difference because there's only one uh, data point and all of the data was every 15 minutes. So then if I compare it to T-Mobile was 50 milliseconds for its average across the whole span and AT&T was 151 milliseconds as the average. So a clear difference there between the Verizon and T-Mobile versus AT&T where AT&T is clearly um, not as fast. All right, so then the other calculation I did was standard deviation. And standard deviation is looking at how much that um, data changes over time. So if your milliseconds for latency was always 50 milliseconds, and it never changed, your standard deviation would be zero. Um, and so this is an indication of how stable that average is. So for Verizon, it won at 8.7 milliseconds for standard deviation. 
for T-Mobile, it was 9.4 milliseconds, so very close to the Verizon one. But AT&T, again, uh, fared poorly here, and that was with a standard deviation of 48.5 milliseconds. So that's telling you that you, know, you could expect a wide range of ping whenever you're testing. That was very apparent in the data itself. So why does that matter? You know, uh, for a lot of people using the service, it doesn't, actually. Um, all of those are maybe reasonable, and uh, you can get away with them. And, and the other thing to note here with this data is that it's not perfect, and that's because it is not controlled as far as being loaded ping or unloaded ping. It's really just testing the ping at that given time, regardless if there's any data going through or not. So that, that will induce some um, differences in the results as well. But the point here is latency really matters for a couple key features. One of them is real-time gaming when you're playing a game online. Uh, every player knows about latency and um, lag because it affects their gameplay significantly. The other one where latency can be really important is voice over IP for either talking or especially video conferencing. So if you work from home and you're doing video conferencing, Having that lag where sometimes I've seen like a couple seconds lag, um, that can be very significant having a conversation. It makes it seem like you're always interrupting when someone else is talking or you talk over each other. Um, that kind of stuff can happen. And then there's a couple other things out there where latency really does affect the performance. But for things like streaming TV or downloading movies or surfing even the web, really those latencies don't play a huge role and you won't really mind. And then one other thing I will say about this stuff is that this is a very big your mileage may vary answer because this is my performance here at my house with my service and my tower. And these actually all connect to either the same tower or actually the thing is two towers side by side that they connect to. But my point is that the service will be different for you based on what signals you get at your house. But I have done research online where I'm trying to understand how other users are seeing it. People comment on my channel, and I encourage you to comment down below. In fact, if you have some data yourself that you've seen, and I have seen consistently that the AT&T is not as good, and I've seen uh, Verizon tend to be better. For me, my biggest complaint with Verizon is my upload ping does tend to... Um, spike higher when I'm uh, maximizing my data throughput so if I'm doing a speed test and I have um, you know I'm trying to upload as fast as it can uh, sometimes I do see my uh, ping spike there T-Mobile is susceptible to that as well but uh, it seems a little bit less so so that's my experience you know but please add your comments down below if you have your own feedback or what you've seen and uh, we can all learn from that and let me just clarify which bands I'm on here for this speed test. So, you know, when I have the T-Mobile one hooked up, I'm on N41 for my 5G. So that's their 5G ultra capacity service. I'm typically on band B2 or B66 for my 4G anchor. And then for Verizon, I'm on their C-band um, network, which is their N77. And then for AT&T, I'm on their 5G plus, I think is what they call it. So that is their, their faster service that I have out there. And that is what the pings were all done basically with. And that was just with the stock units. I did not hook up extra antennas. I do have waveform antennas that I have hooked up actually to different ones. But um, for this testing, is just the stock gateways, stock settings as they, as they sit.